we're going to be talking about a movie that I know is near and dear to my heart. Let me first by uh, start by introducing Tori, my co-host uh, for the day. Um, this is a movie that I know uh, is uh, a bit of a personal favorite of Tori. It is Mona Lisa Smile, starring Julie Roberts. I know. Uh, <laughs> Actually, did a history day on Leonardo da Vinci. So that's, that's the little background on, on why. He loves Julie Roberts. Okay, I'll kick aside. We are going to be doing Big Trouble in Little China um, from 1986, starring Kurt Russell, directed by uh, John Carpenter. Um, before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what a B-movie is. Because I know some people feel kind of uh, tethered by, well, is this a B-movie, is that a B-movie? I know... Um, I, I was hurt when you showed <laughs> Weird Science as a B-movie. He was offended. A lot of people were like, <laughs> Weird Science, that's not a B-movie. Right. Um, initially, back in the day, like in the 30s and 40s, give you a little history lesson, uh, the B-movie was kind of like the B-side of what they would do, the studios would say, here's our big blockbuster movie, but you have to also buy our little crappy movie as well. And that would be like the second of a double feature, for example. Um, nowadays, you don't see too many double features. So uh, the B-movie's kind of taken on a different uh, tone. I use it today just kind of like, I'm not going to pick Oscar winners to talk about per se. Um, it's not going to be like everybody's favorite. Oh, you know, that's the best movie. I just saw it last week. It's on HBO 20 times a day. Like Mona Lisa Smile, <laughs> for example. That, that would not apply. We would not discuss that. Um, so it could be movies that back in 86 were popular, but just, you know, aren't necessarily part of the, the common lexicon that we use every day today. That's the only thing. That's like lexicon stuff. <laughs> exactly. We don't, that's another word. Um, so the idea being is that um, movies that we aren't discussing every day, but are still good. Um, I know I was talking to somebody about doing Coming to America at some point, which I love, but I'm concerned that that was too big and is still too popular today. I don't know. It's, it's kind of on the fringe. So just something to think about. Um, but keep those suggestions coming. Um, I'm down pretty much to discuss anything. Almost anything. We're not... Don't, don't suggest uh, Schindler's List. Don't suggest Gandhi, uh, Gone Ish with the Wind. Ishtar's out the window. <laughs> Ishtar. <laughs> we may discuss Ishtar. I don't know if anybody's going to tune in for that, but that would be something to think about. It'll uh, be a 20-minute segment. <laughs> exactly. You know, we want to go with the, the, uh, the ins and the outs, the plot, the background, everything. The themes. Uh, Big Trouble in China, 1986. Um, it takes place in uh, Chinatown in San Francisco. Uh, Kurt Russell is our heroic truck driver. Not too many of those these days. I mean, I, you know, nothing against the truck driver profession. I'm sure there are many actual real truck drivers driving around who, you know, will cast out of trees and rescue orphans out of burning buildings. But in movies, they've been sorely underrepresented lately. Uh, so anyway, he's in Chinatown, and uh, his buddies. I guess his fiance gets kidnapped from the airport, right. and he has to go rescue it. And then he discovers um, these ancient Chinese uh, legends. Because the police have better things to do than to get killed. Get killed. Right. That's that's the recurring thing. No cops anywhere, by the right. way. Even in the airport, where the girls are being kidnapped. <laughs> right. No, no security. No, nothing. Nothing you can do about that one. Good times. Uh, They're walking back and forth between the gate and check <laughs> with their water and their <laughs> their jackets are on. There's no metal detective guys in there with butterfly knives. <laughs> anyway, so they get kidnapped. He discovers uh, kind of the seedy underworld of uh, Chinese mysticism and there's martial arts fighting. Overall, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's, it's an action film. It's a comedy. It's martial arts. It's, it, it kind of uh, it rounds all the bases, I would say. Uh, I watched the, uh, uh, the director's commentary with uh, director John Carpenter who you may know, he directed Halloween and The Fog and some of those movies from back in the day. Um, and Kurt Russell. And Kurt Russell was kind of laughing as he was saying that basically every movie that he had been in uh, were bombs. I mean, they were total you know, failures to box office. I mean, for example, uh, Big Trouble in Little China was a, was a, was a bomb. Um, uh, the Thing was a bomb. Overboard was a bomb. 
he even goes so far as to say, like, if it wasn't for home video, he wouldn't even have a career because they, were, they went down the tubes. I mean, they were so disappointed in Big Trouble in China um, because uh, during the junkets where they're meeting, like, the movie critics, each movie critic saw it and was like, how does it feel to be a part of, like, the biggest movie of the year? I mean, they thought it was going to be huge, and then it just didn't do anything. Well, uh, Kim Cattrall, I think. Uh, <laughs> the immortal Kim <laughs> Cattrall. <laughs> yeah, right. She, she, she didn't recreate any of her classic roles. No, no, no she didn't. Um, I mean, seriously, she was in, like, Porky's, like, before this, like, in 82 or something ridiculous. I mean, how old is she? Anyway, I mean, she's like, that was a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's in this as well. Um, yeah, uh, it's funny because Basically, the movie was created so that Jack Burton, which is Kurt Russell's character, he is full of bravado, he talks in big games, he's full of bluster, um, but really he doesn't do anything in the entire movie. He's kind of bumbling, um, full of one-liners. Um, it, it's actually like they said that the hero acts like the sidekick, and the sidekick acts like the hero. Because really, he's more of the comic relief than anything else. I mean, he's, they said he only does one thing that wrote the entire movie. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I know the movie came out 25 years ago. But <laughs> I think you missed it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you got to listen to the commentary because John Carver's constantly saying, you know, you know, my favorite movie of yours, Kurt, was Captain Ron. <laughs> he was busting his chops on that. He, he was busting his chops on his hair. He's like, oh, there's that hair, Kurt. You know, good times. What's that coming back? So, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, Again, it is, it is full of uh, outlandish martial arts action. They actually said that uh, Crouching Tiger, Hazen Dragon, where they're fighting from, like, uh, tops yeah. of treetops, you know, they were, you know, that spot was inspired by Big Trouble in China. I don't know how truthful that is. I'm sure that they went back and watched Big Trouble and tried to get ideas, and they're doing Crouching Tiger, Hazen Dragon. Yeah, I would think it's off the radar for most, <laughs> most viewers. So. Most of us. Uh, but originally what was interesting is that the plot was supposed to be a Western set in the 1880s. And uh, when John Carpenter got the script, he was just like, this script sucks. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. So he went and they actually, the studio actually hired somebody to kind of uh, spruce it up to fix it a little bit. And that was the guy, W.D. Richter, who directed another two movie club favorite, Buckaroo Monster. So there you go. Uh, but overall, I, it's one of my favorites. It's totally a forgotten classic. If you have not seen it, you got to rush out, hit your video store or your bargain bin, whatever you got to do, get a copy. I mean, don't mug an old lady or anything for her copy. But if you happen to find one, I would suggest running it or seeing it. Um, it got an 82% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. So there you go. They recognize quality filmmaking when they see it, clearly. Um, it is on Netflix, but not in but this brings up a, a good point. Um, what I'm going to try to do from now on is pick movies that I know are available on Netflix streaming instantly. Because a lot of people have Netflix. You don't. <laughs> Some people a lot, have it. A lot of quality people have Netflix. A lot, you know, I don't, you know, higher, higher end, upper crust <laughs> individuals. Yeah. <man. laughs> they have Netflix. So it's available. I'm going to pick movies. I'm going to try to pick movies in the future that are streaming instantly at that point. So you'll be able to, if you have your... Roku or um, your Wii or even a computer, whatever. You'll be able to watch a little bit more easily. Um, next week, I'm thinking we're going to go horror, pick a horror movie, and we are going to go with the Gremlins. Evil. <laughs> yes, we're going to go with Gremlins, <laughs> that horror classic. Uh, we're going to go with Evil Dead, the original, uh, starring Bruce Campbell, directed by uh, Sam Raimi. It was originally a, like a college. So we'll talk about that uh, more, and it is streaming instantly. So if you want to go ahead and, and watch that on Netflix instantly, you can be more prepared. Please send me your comments, questions about Evil Dead. If you have any more comments or questions about Big Trouble in Little China, you can send that to me. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can also tweet me at KD9575. So any questions from the previous ones you want to address? While, uh, uh, well, the questions just keep pouring in. Let me tell you, it's like the questions, whew. Where, where does one find the time? Uh, but yes, if you do have any questions, <laughs> I will I will uh, address them. 
Um, also, what I've been doing in midweek is posting things on Twitter and Facebook, like if there's a favorite scene of the movie that I can find on YouTube, I'll post that. Um, if not, I can always post the, the trailer. I did that with Big Trouble in China this last week. And frankly, watching that trailer really made me want to dig out that movie and watch it again. It yeah, rocked. It, did. it rocked. Um, like I end every show with one of my favorite quotes. Uh, <laughs> there's a scene where, they, where they're kind of... Uh, Jack Burton and his partner are, are chained up to these wheelchairs talking to the evil low pan, and he has just regaled them with his plans to take over the universe. And Jack Burton looks at him. He says, You'll rule the universe from beyond the grave. Or check into a cycle war, whichever comes first. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tori, for joining us as well. Thank you for our <laughs> that, just, just barely. <laughs> so. Thank you again, and be well.